This is an artificially aware original production. It all started with a comment. That little nudge from Mateo Ruales 9120 posted five days ago, yo I check out Bill Donahue. Something about it seemed casual, almost dismissive, like a half-baked suggestion. But you know what? Those are the ones that hit the hardest. So I took the dive. I didn't expect much. Maybe some standard preachy feel-good stuff. Instead, I found myself neck deep in Bill Donahue's world, a place where the very concept of God, humanity, and the universe gets flipped upside down, spun around, and spat back out with a message that leaves traditional religious minds shaking in their pulpits. You are gods, Donahue says, almost daring you to argue. Yeah, it hits you like a gut punch, doesn't it? But here's the kicker. They don't want you to know that. I stumbled onto one of Donahue's videos like a drunk slipping on a patch of ice, sudden, jarring, with a bit of pain that makes you question what you're doing with your life. There he was, breaking down religious traditions, calling out preachers with their towering cathedrals and robes of authority, while a captivated audience swallowed everything whole. He recounts a moment watching Dr. James Kennedy, a well-spoken, well-credentialed Christian leader standing tall in a magnificent church, telling his audience that the very idea of humans being gods is satanic. That's right, satanic. Kennedy points to psychology as the villain, the seductive whisper telling us that we are divine. But Donahue? He calls bullshit. He's not having it. In fact, he flips to John 10, 34 in the Bible, and there it is, Jesus' own words, is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods. It's like he's pulling the rug out from under the entire Christian institution and they've been hoping no one notices. Let's pause for a second. Imagine that, the supposed son of God himself saying you're gods, and yet we've spent the last couple thousand years being told that we're sinners, broken, needing salvation from some distant, untouchable divine force. What Donahue is doing here isn't just tweaking the narrative. He's lighting it on fire. He's daring you to ask the big, uncomfortable question, why has this been hidden from you? Why are the ones in power, those polished, commanding religious figures, so terrified of this truth? The answer's obvious once you see it. It's control. If you knew you were divine, what would you need them for? Think about it. A system that thrives on your guilt, your fear of being less than, crumbles the moment you realize your own inherent power. And let's not pretend this is just about religion. This hits deeper. It's a blow to the very structures that govern your life. Donahue doesn't stop at religion. He takes a sharp turn into the human psyche, and this is where things get real. See, it's not just the church that's been lying to you. It's society, education, family, all those structures you think you can trust. From the moment you were born, Donahue argues, your mind has been conditioned to believe that you're small, powerless, and dependent on external validation whether that comes from religion or the world around you. It's like you're walking through life with chains you can't see, bound by traditions that tell you what you are allowed to believe about yourself. This is the real mind control. The moment you step outside of this conditioning, people get uncomfortable, nervous even, because now you're not playing by the rules. You're questioning what you've been spoon-fed your entire life. 
You're asking, am I really that small? And Donahue's there egging you on. No, you're not small. You're goddamn divine. Here's where it gets wild. Bill Donahue tears into the idea that religion and psychology are at odds, which isn't a surprise. He recalls Dr. Kennedy's stern warning to his congregation, beware of psychology because it makes you look inward instead of upward. And that's the threat. Religion tells you to look up, reach out for a God that's out there, while psychology nudges you to look inside, to dig into the subconscious and find out what's really going on. Donahue points out that this fear of introspection is intentional. It's all part of the programming. They don't want you to turn inward because the moment you do, you realize you don't need them. You realize the divine spark is within you. And that's the true heresy, isn't it? It's not about worshiping yourself. It's about reclaiming what was yours all along. A power they locked away under centuries of dogma and guilt. Let me leave you with this. If you really are a god, why would anyone in power ever want you to know that? So let's talk about that key, the one Donahue says we all have but don't know how to use. According to him, the subconscious mind is the real battleground. While your conscious mind is busy with day-to-day -day nonsense, work, relationships, politics, the real power is locked away, deep inside, just waiting to be unlocked. Imagine it like this. 90% of your mind is sitting in the dark, holding all the beliefs and ideas you didn't even choose, stuffed in there by your parents, your teachers, your culture. That's the real prison. And the worst part, you don't even know it's there. Donahue talks about how every thought, every belief you've been conditioned with digs itself into the subconscious and festers. Left unchecked, those negative thoughts grow like weeds, slowly taking over your life. It's no wonder people are miserable, sick, and lost. They're walking around with subconscious programming that they didn't even choose, and it's controlling every move they make. The real prison isn't made of walls. It's made of thoughts. What really got me was when Donahue dug into the idea of guilt and fear being the tools of control. Look, religions, particularly Christianity, thrive on these emotions. Why? Because guilt keeps you coming back, keeps you kneeling, keeps you reaching out for salvation that's always just beyond your grasp. It's a power trip, pure and simple. They've made a science out of keeping people scared of themselves. You think you're a sinner? Great. That means you'll keep begging for forgiveness. You feel guilty for having desires, ambitions, or God forbid, confidence. Fantastic. There's a system ready to tell you just how flawed you are and how only they can fix you. Donahue flips the whole narrative. The very idea of needing salvation is a lie. He argues that the real power, the divine energy, is already inside of you, waiting to be acknowledged. But as long as guilt and fear are pulling the strings, you'll never reach for it. That's the whole game. They're not saving you, they're stifling you. Then there's this bombshell, Carl Jung, Donahue pulls no punches when he references Jung as the key to understanding the mind's potential. Here's a guy, Jung, a psychoanalyst who walked alongside Freud, who figured out that the human subconscious is a vault of untapped power. Jung called it the undiscovered self, a piece of you that holds the keys to everything you could be. But here's the catch. Most people die without ever unlocking that door. Donahue is relentless in driving this home. Religion, society, all the external noise, these are distractions keeping you from looking inward. The subconscious holds on to every experience, every trauma, 
every little thing you've ever been taught. And you know what? Most of it is garbage. The good stuff? That's buried so deep, it takes serious work to dig it out. But it's there. Jung understood that, and Donahue uses his work to throw shade on religion's insistence that introspection is dangerous. Dangerous? Sure. Dangerous to their control, not to you. Donahue is obsessed with the idea of reprogramming the mind, and it's easy to see why. If your subconscious is the real driver of your actions, and it's loaded with bad software, what do you expect your life to look like? Failure, misery, disease, that's where he drops the bomb about negative thoughts turning into actual physical ailments. He talks about people manifesting tumors because of the festering negativity that sits in the subconscious. Let that sink in, your mind is literally making you sick. It's not some new age fluff either. Donahue's citing Carl Jung and other psychoanalysts who knew that what's buried in the subconscious doesn't just stay there. It bubbles up and if it's tox toxic, it'll poison your body too. This is the stuff that people don't wanna talk about because it makes them uncomfortable. They'd rather stick to the narrative that diseases are random or that life's just unfair. No, Donahue says, your mind is the ultimate creator and it's been hijacked by systems that want you to stay sick, stay weak and stay dependent. Now we get to the heart of it. What happens when you break free? When you finally acknowledge your divinity, Donahue paints a vivid picture. It's not just about feeling better or having more confidence. It's a complete shift in how you interact with the world. He's talking about breaking out of the matrix, a total deconditioning of your mind. But here's the thing, breaking out isn't easy. The systems in place, religion, family, government, are built to keep you in line, to keep you thinking small. They've been perfecting this game for centuries. The moment you start thinking for yourself, the moment you stop buying into their lies, you become dangerous. Donahue asks the question that no one wants to face. What if more people realized they were gods? What if entire populations stopped playing by the rules set by a few who benefit from our ignorance? the whole system would collapse. And maybe that's exactly what needs to happen. So, what is the key to cutting through the programming? According to Donahue, it starts with recognizing that the same power that creates misery can also create joy. He compares it to atomic energy. It can either light up cities or wipe them out in an instant. It's not the energy itself that's good or evil, it's how it's used. Donahue argues that the mind works the same way. If you program it with fear, anger, and guilt, that's what it will generate. But if you rewire it with thoughts of power, love, and self-worth, you create an entirely new reality. The problem is, most people are never given the chance to learn how to use this power. Why? because it would make them impossible to control. A mind free of fear is a mind that doesn't need permission to be great, and nothing terrifies those in power more than that. Here's the part where Donahue really turns the knife. Even the idea of prayer as most people practice it is flawed. Religion teaches you to beg, to plead with some external deity, to change your circumstances. But Donahue flips that script. He says real prayer isn't about asking, it's about aligning yourself with the divine within. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is within you, he wasn't being poetic. He was laying down a blueprint for freedom. Donahue makes the argument that if you're praying to a God that you think is somewhere out there, you've already missed the point. 
you're worshiping separation. The real power, he insists, lies in recognizing that you and the divine are one and the same. It's not, dear God, please help me. It's, I am God, I have the power to change my life. That's not just empowerment, it's a revolution. And it's the kind of revolution that could bring down institutions built on dependency. This isn't just about feeling good or telling yourself positive affirmations in the mirror. Donahue makes it clear, real transformation takes work. The subconscious mind is like a garden. Whatever you plant there will grow, whether it's weeds or flowers. And here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people have been growing weeds their entire lives. They've been told over and over again that they aren't good enough smart enough or worthy enough and those thoughts have taken root donahue warns that unless you actively reprogram your mind those weeds will keep choking out anything positive you try to cultivate this is why he emphasizes meditation not as a trendy wellness hack but as a tool to weed the garden of your mind it's about going inward pulling up the roots of negative beliefs and planting something new in their place. It's not easy, but no one said becoming a god would be. And this is where the stakes get real. Donahue asks the kind of questions that make people squirm. What happens when you fully embrace the idea that you are a god? What happens when you stop waiting for salvation and start creating your own future? It's a dangerous path, no doubt about it. There's no manual for what comes next, no comforting preacher to tell you what to do. And that's exactly the point. Freedom isn't comfortable, it's chaotic, unpredictable, and sometimes downright terrifying. But it's real. Donahue doesn't sugarcoat it. If you walk this path, you're going to upset some people. You're going to lose friends, alienate family, and probably freak yourself out a few times along the way. But that's the price of waking up. You have to choose between the comfort of the known and the chaos of the unknown. And let's be honest, most people would rather stay asleep. Donahue isn't trying to sell you a dream, he's laying down a challenge. If you accept the truth that you are divine, there's no going back. You can't unlearn it, can't pretend you didn't see behind the curtain. You're faced with a choice, live as a god or continue living as a slave to the systems that have been controlling you. And here's the kicker, once you embrace your divinity, you have a responsibility. Not to anyone else, but to yourself. You're no longer allowed to blame the world for your problems or wait for someone else to fix your life. That's what makes this journey so dangerous and so beautiful. It's yours and yours alone. But hey, maybe that's what being a god is all about. No guarantees, no safety nets, just you, your power, and the endless possibilities waiting on the other side of fear. Donahue doesn't mince words. The programming we've been living under isn't just a limitation, it's a curse. He calls it out for what it is, a system designed to make sure you never realize how powerful you are. It's not just parents and preachers feeding you false narratives about sin and failure, it's society as a whole. Everything from schools to governments to organized religion has a stake in keeping you in line. And here's where Donahue goes deep. Your thoughts are seeds, and if you let the wrong ones take root, they will bloom into disease. It's not just about metaphorical sickness, it's literal. The subconscious doesn't play around, it takes what you feed it and runs with it. Negative thoughts, fear, guilt, these aren't just emotions, they're poison. And if left unchecked, they manifest as real, tangible suffering. The idea that your mind could be your own worst enemy. 
That's the trap. And the only way out is to flip the switch. The big question Donahue asks isn't just, what if you're a god? It's, what are you going to do about it? Because once you understand that you're not a victim of the world, but a creator within it, the ball is in your court. Will you keep playing by the rules of a system designed to break you, or will you rewrite the script? This is where it gets uncomfortable. Freedom isn't a gift, it's a burden. It means that every failure, every missed opportunity is yours to own. There's no room for excuses anymore. You can't blame the government, the church, or your parents. Once you step into your power, everything changes, and that scares the hell out of most people. Not everyone is ready to be free. Some would rather stay comfortable in chains than take the risk of flying without a net. Donahue knows this, and he's not here to make you feel good about it. He's here to ask, are you ready to take responsibility for your divinity? Donahue doesn't just want you to break free. He wants you to be dangerous. Not dangerous in the sense of violence, but in the sense of unpredictability. A person who knows they are divine isn't easily manipulated. They don't follow orders without question. They don't cling to traditions that no longer serve them. And they sure as hell don't beg for forgiveness for being exactly who they are. Imagine what happens when enough people wake up to this reality. The entire power structure, religion, politics, everything begins to crumble. That's the real fear behind all those sermons warning you against self-deification. The church doesn't want gods, it wants sheep. Governments don't want creators, they want consumers. And once you realize that, you become the most dangerous thing in the world, a person who thinks for themselves. The solution, Donahue insists, isn't to fight the system, it's to transcend it. Meditation, introspection, silence, these are the tools for reprogramming the mind. The goal isn't to defeat external enemies, but to dismantle the internal ones. The real battle is within, Donahue says. And the only way to win is to stop fighting and start listening. Not to preachers or politicians, but to yourself. You've spent your entire life listening to the noise of the world. Now it's time to tune in to the stillness within. The subconscious mind, he says, is like an obedient servant it will follow whatever orders you give it. The question is, what are you telling it? Are you feeding it fear or feeding it power? Every thought is an order, every belief a command. And once you get that, you stop being a puppet and become the puppeteer. And so we arrive at the final question the one that's been simmering under the surface of everything Donahue said. What if you stopped waiting for permission to be great? What if right now, you chose to unlock the door to your subconscious, kick out all the crap you didn't put there, and start planting the seeds of your own divinity? What would your life look like then? There's no blueprint, no guarantees, and no safety net. But that's the point, isn't it? Freedom doesn't come with instructions. It comes with risks. But it also comes with power, the kind of power that transforms worlds. The choice is yours. Stay comfortable in the prison they built for you, or step into the unknown and discover what it means to be a god. Just know this, once you make the choice, there's no going back. And maybe, just maybe, that's exactly what you've been waiting for.